Слава Україні! Слава нації! Україна! 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 Героям України тричі! Ворогам України тричі! My friends, I will say something that I always like to say in our rallies. Thank you all very much for coming here today. It's unbelievably important that we consistently send our message to the whole world. Unfortunately, sometimes people can have goldfish memories. It's true. It's true. It sometimes happens. And we need to keep reminding everybody that the war is ongoing. And Ukraine needs help in order to win it. Help Ukraine and you help yourself in the future. Because a country like Russia cannot be allowed to exist at the borders of Europe. An expansionistic entity like Russia cannot be allowed to do as they please and to spread their influence and to develop their power. Because they will attack their neighbors first and then theirs and then theirs. This is something isolationists surprisingly never understand. The way they see the world is, there's a few countries between me and this expansionistic entity. I will allow them to attack them then, it's not my country. And then this expansionistic entity goes for the next country. And what does the isolationist say? Well, he says this, there's one more country between me and this expansionistic entity. They will never attack me, never. And then that country also gets invaded. And they have a border with the expansionistic entity. Now what would they say then? You'd expect them to say, okay, I've had enough. You've obviously attacked that guy and that guy, this country and that country. I am next on the block. But no, that's not at all what the isolationists say. They say, my country, my borders, I don't care about the rest. And in the end, we have very sad and surprised faces when they get attacked and when they are brought down to the heel, when they are subjugated, when they are ruled by these authoritarian regimes. Unfortunately, this lesson seems to have been lost by many different people. Entire countries, in fact, seem to have elected individuals who go exactly against this message, against this knowledge, such as Slovakia and Hungary, for example. Two countries that have suffered a lot because of the Soviet Union. And yet, their leaders are enabling this neo-communist expansionism from Russia. Why? Well, my friends, once again, it would seem like some people have truly, truly have goldfish memories. But that's okay. We are here to remind those who have forgotten and to inform those who are unaware. Don't worry, you can always go around, around here or behind. But you're always welcome to join us too if you want. This was my too, it's my joining you. Well, thank you very much. Everyone welcome my friends, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Always lovely to see new people here, new faces. And of course also thank you very much to all of our regulars, to the people who come here every single time. <laughs> oh, we have some of our friends from Belarus. You know, the people of Belarus, they have tried to separate themselves from Russia, from the Russian influence. However, the Russians responded the same way they always respond. They sent their tanks to the capital of Belarus. They did the same with the Kazakh people who wanted to protest, peaceful protests, against the Russian puppet regime that they had in Kazakhstan, exactly the same result as in Belarus. Now, Lukashenko is obviously in Putin's pocket. There's a very funny video that I'm sure every one of our friends from Belarus is very well aware of. And it's this video where Lukashenko is talking to Solovyov in an interview. Personally, it's my absolute favorite video of Lukashenko ever. In that video, Solovyov who ironically, in that video, actually looks reasonable. And it's very difficult to make Solovyov look reasonable. So Lukashenko achieved that. I have to give him some respect for that at least. Lukashenko claims that he will be made into a colonel by Putin. To which Solovyov asks him, but 
how would you be made a colonel by the president of Russia? You're the president of Belarus. How would that happen? And uh, Lukashenko has uh, a 10,000 plus IQ answer to that question. He says, well, he will make me the colonel of the Russian army, which is also the Soviet army. To which Solovyov asks him, well, how do you see that happening? A country with two colonels. And uh, he gives the best reply ever. You know, this is my personal favorite. He says, well, that's my problem, not yours. It's perfect. It's truly unbelievable. You know, Lukashenko is an insane individual. He needs to be put in a nutty house. I don't even, I'm not even sure if I want him to be put in jail. He's a bit too crazy to actually be put in jail. He needs to be put in a restraining vest. You know what I mean? But my friends, I digress. Once again, thank you very much to our friends from Belarus who have come here to support our cause. And know this, my friends, we support your cause also. Because your victory is our victory too. And one day, they will achieve it. One day we will achieve it. We have our independence now. And we will have our peace in the future. As long as we stand together, as long as we stand united. All together we will win. All together we will win. All together we will win. Thank you. All together we will win. All together we will win. All together we will win. Arm Ukraine, protect peace. 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 Stop Russia, stop the war. 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 It's always great to see new people join our rallies. And personally, I also really like when people from our rallies like to give some of their own message. Like to give a piece of their own mind. To have a few words. To tell the world how they feel. And my friends, always feel welcome to come here and to give a little message of your own. And for example, Anya here, do you want to say something too? You want to do all good? Come, come, come here, come here. Don't worry about it. Slava Ukraine! Hello, Slava! Slava Nazi! Smerd Voroha! Ukraine! Voroha Sev! Heroim Ukraine Trichi! Slava! 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 Hello, everyone. Um, just two days ago, I was in Ukraine. I just come back. And you know, my feeling, it's like a parallel reality. Uh, here is very multicolorful world. Uh, there are a little bit like another atmosphere. Um, yes, in civilian place, in safe place, everything like all right. People working, people start trying to save our country, trying to support our military because all of us, we have our relatives, we have our close friends who are fighting, who protect us, you know, but in atmosphere it's very difficult. It's very difficult to go through the center in each city and to see exactly a lot of beautiful pictures, amazing people who already died because of freedom. Glory to our defenders and Slava Heroim Ukraine! Slava! Slava! Slava Heroim Ukraine Trichy! Slava! 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 What I want to say, I can tell you one funny story which happened with me when I come back home. I, uh, with some volunteers, we bought a car for our military and uh, my reason was just to bring it for them. And it was, uh, you know, border. You never know how much, <laughs> how much, many time it takes. And I came back, coming home during the night. And uh, this car, like you know, like in a movie, broken down in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> in the fields. And you know, in this moment, I just like realized, like, okay, uh, what is next? Like, I'm in a safe place. I'm in a 
like very close to my area and nice people stopped, helped me with everything and then I just brought that car home. And it's good that it happened with me, not with them, when they are in a dangerous place. And you know, we need, we need more weapons, we need more cars, we need more support to stop this war. Stop Putin! Stop the war! 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 Slava Ukraini! Heroes! Slava! Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much. Lovely, lovely message. Lovely message. It's very important for us to hear it from people who have just returned from Ukraine. It's very important for us to know what people in Ukraine are going through. And that is what this is all about. To help the Ukrainian people pull through. To help the Ukrainian people win. And to finally bring forward a better world. If Ukraine loses, the consequences will be global. And if Ukraine wins, the consequences will be global also. But they will be positive. There will be a betterment of humanity as a whole. They will prove that the country that has given up the most for world peace, that has given up the third biggest nuclear arsenal in the world, in the biggest nuclear demilitarization in human history, can have peace. They will prove that you don't need nuclear weapons to prevent yourself from being attacked and genocided. And that is a beautiful message that every person on earth should strive for. This is a conflict between freedom and slavery. This is a war that the Ukrainian people are fighting for their lives. And this is a war for the soul of humanity. We will have many bad actors coming to us and claiming that Russia is in the right, making up all kinds of lies and deceit. But we must know better, my friends. We have to do our due diligence and do research and know that Ukraine is fighting for freedom and Ukraine is fighting for a better future. And the only way to have that better future for all of humanity is to help Ukraine win. Help Ukraine as you promised. 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 Stop Russia, stop the war. 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 Stop Russia, stop the war! Help Ukraine protect peace! 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 My friends, there is a message that I always like to say. Arms keep peace. The Patriot air defense missiles have saved countless lives in Ukraine and they are saving lives every single day. It is essential that Ukraine has the means of defending itself against the Russian terrorist regime. The Russians have proven to not care about civilian lives. In fact, they have proven to very often go for those same civilian targets just to scare the population. It's a terror tactic that they've practiced ever since the Soviet Union. They ever since the beginning of their history, after the separation of the Kievan Rus, after the Kievan Rus, the heartland, the predecessor of Ukraine, had separated because of the Mongol invasion. And whilst Ukraine has recovered their culture and their dignity, and has rebuilt their character as a country, after the Mongols, the Russians were scarred forever. The Russians are still behaving like Mongol Hans and Mongol slaves. And this relation 
between their rulers and their people has not changed ever since those days. We need to finally understand this. We need to finally see reality as it is. Ukraine has its history and Russia has its lies. And there's a very interesting picture that proves this. You know, the saying goes that a picture is worth a thousand words. And no picture proves this more. Thank you very much. No picture proves this more than that one picture where Stalin shows up with two other individuals near him, nearby a river and a bridge. I'm sure some of you, my friends, have seen this picture before. And that picture shows him with two people, right? Wrong. That was a temporary picture. Later on, it was edited by Stalin's propaganda machine, by the censorship machine, and they have removed one of the individuals from the picture as if he never was there in the first place. Now that, that is funny. It's very interesting. It's like you cancel friendship with someone and they immediately disappear from all of your pictures. Why might that be, you might ask? Well, of course, Stalin fell out with that particular person. And Putin is no exception. Remember Prigozhin? I certainly do. Very interesting character, I have to say. A war criminal, through and through. But an interesting character nonetheless. He revealed a lot of truth about the Russian terrorist regime. He revealed that this war against Ukraine was never supposed to, start, to stop any imaginary Nazis. Because he did not find any in Ukraine. His words of the man who has perhaps had the most success on the Russian side, on the battlefield against the Ukrainians. He also said that this war's main purpose for Putin, or uh, Visoli Dedushka, as he usually called him, the happy grandpa, which is how usually Russians call Putin these days. Those who are not afraid of going to jail, that is. Those who are, don't call him that. Prigozhin said that this war's main aim was to enrich the Russian elites. Not the Russian people, mind you, the elites themselves. Prigozhin, before he said all of these things, he was besties with Putin. He was Putin's chef, as they called him. The organizer of the Concord catering organization that Putin would always hire for his events. And you know how it goes, how the saying goes. If a, dictator, if, the, if a dictator allows you to make his food, then that dictator clearly trusts you. Because we all know about the many assassination attempts that can be had against dictators. Well, Putin trusted Prigozhin. And Prigozhin trusted Putin. Very misplaced kind of trust, I'm sure you'll agree, in hindsight. Because, of course, when Prigozhin started telling the truth, when Prigozhin started showing his discontent with the way him and his troops were being treated. He had a very unfortunate accident near Moscow. A little plane crash. Truly tragic. Or at least Putin has said. And he showed condolences to his family and he showed support to the achievements of Prigozhin. To all of the war crimes, that is. Not to the truth that he was revealing about the Russian terrorist regime. Of course. But in reality, my friends, in the reality, we all know the truth. Prigozhin's plane was knocked down by the Russian air defense. On purpose. Prigozhin needed to die so that Putin would continue his lies flowing. And Prigozhin was becoming a liability for Putin. That is why he died. And he was the best example of what it truly means to try to negotiate with a Russian terrorist regime. So, for all the Orbans, all the Fickles, all the Tucker Carlsons of this world, if you want to fall off from the tallest window in the world, do support Putin. And he's going to give you exactly what you deserve in the end. But for all the people who want to live as free men and women, we need to stand together, we need to oppose Putin, and we need to make sure that authoritarianism does not win. My friends, our rally will soon reach its end. 
But before it does, let's all together, for all the people who have died, for all the people who have suffered, do a minute of silence.